Alright, so I'm finally getting around to putting together the drivetrain for my bow-tailed speedster that I've been building over the past couple years. And I'm going to do a two-part series here showing you guys how I made this whole setup in front of me. This engine I'm using is a 2.4 liter Jaguar XK6 out of a 1958 Mark I. And the transmission I'm using is a Chevy T5 5-speed out of a late 80s S10 pickup. And I picked this engine and transmission independently of each other. And I really didn't give any thought at the time of how I was going to actually connect them. But what I actually ended up using in the middle here is Ford Flathead V8 parts. Uh, so I have a Ford Flathead V8 flywheel, clutch, and bell housing right here, separated by these custom aluminum adapter plates on either side. So in this first part, I'm going to show you how I went from Jaguar to Ford, and in the next video I'll show you how I went from Ford to Chevy. And although, of course, the specifics of what I'm showing you is just this exact setup here, but the general kind of techniques and tricks that I'm going to be using is pretty much the same as what I'd be using if I had any other engine and any other transmission. Um, because it's really all the same. Once you understand how it all works, it's not that complicated, even though it, it seems really complicated at first. Because all you really have is the spinning shaft at the back of the engine that you're trying to connect to a spinning shaft in the transmission. And of course, in between you have a flywheel and clutch and all that uh, junk inside there. So, I hope you enjoyed the video, and stay tuned for part two as well. Okay, so here I have the engine block and crankshaft set in there together. And right here I have the flathead flywheel that I'm going to be adapting to this. Now what I've already had done is I've had a friend machine out the counterbore on the back of this flywheel here, a little bit bigger, so that now this can slip right onto the end of the crankshaft there. Now what I have to do is drill new holes in here for uh, the Jaguar bolt circle there. You can see that this flathead flywheel had two dowel pins and then four bolts in it, as opposed to the crankshaft here, which has two dowel pins and ten bolts in it. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use these two dowel pins and then four bolts for now at least. So I'm going to, yeah, you can see I have it kind of lined up where the holes are going to be drilled. I was able to line it up so they don't interfere at all. Um, so these two lines here will be where the dowel pins are and then I'll drill four holes along these lines that should be able to fit the actual bolts. Alright, so I've got the flywheel here clamped down to the middle. What I've done to make sure that it's centered is I have the pilot bearing in here and I machined this piece on my lathe to fit right into that so that you can see it fits right in so I know that that's centered. And it should be as simple now as just measuring out from both directions and drilling those two holes for the um, dowel pins. these lined up. I'm kind of expecting to at least one of them to be off by maybe a couple foul. Uh, but let's see here. I got my end mills. This one. But that one fit right in. And oh this one fits right in too. That's a perfect fit. Not bad. Not bad. So the bolt holes now should be easy since those don't have to be super super precise. Not like the dowel pins. But that is awesome, it fits right in.
All right, so you can see here now I got um, flywheel bolted on here. Most of those holes turned out pretty well. A couple of them I had to uh, file out a little bit because they're just slightly off. But as you can see, they, it bolts down pretty nicely here. And I was actually able to reuse the same four original bolts from the flathead flywheel itself because the, the threads inside the crankshaft are the same uh, size. So that worked out pretty well. I also cut up that um, broken end mill into two little pins here. This is why you never throw anything away. I broke this end mill probably four years ago, but I kept it because I never know when I might need a, a half inch hardened pin. So it worked out nicely for this. You can see two pins just like that. So now I'm going to try to probably just drive these down through the, the flywheel here into that crankshaft. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got the flywheel resurfaced. I took it to a machine shop and they did that for me. Turned out beautifully, as you can see here. Now, the next step is the pressure plate. This is the original pressure plate that was bolted to this flywheel when I got it. This is the big 11-inch truck pressure plate, though. So this is definitely bigger than what makes sense for what I'm doing. I also have this pressure plate right here. You can see this one's a little bit rougher, but this is the 10 inch version, which is basically the same as this, just a little bit smaller. And this is what most people seem to use um, for just normal street cars and hot rods that, with the flat heads in them, they run a 10 inch pressure plate on it. And that, that works great. But what I'm going to be using is this one right here. This is the nine inch pressure plate. I figured since I'm putting this on a pretty light car, I can get away with the smaller clutch uh, it should work just fine and it's also lighter than these two over here so it'll save me some rotating mass there this flywheel is already really heavy so I'm going to try to lighten this too at some point you can see since this has a smaller footprint on it there's a lot of material around the outside of the flywheel here that can be machined away to lighten this flywheel a little bit so what I'm going to do now is drill a new bolt circle to bolt the smaller pressure plate down to the flywheel I've already made up a little dowel right here. You can see this has a just a little punch in the center there. This fits right into the pilot bearing. And I've already scribed a line around the outside of here, um, just like this. So I've already scribed a circle there along the, the center line of that bolt circle. So all I have to do is set that pressure plate on here, mark where the holes are, and then go um, drill along that line. And it should be pretty simple. All right, so now what I need to focus on is the engine itself here and what I'm going to be doing for the bell housing. What I have right here, as you can see, this is, right here is the Ford Flathead V8 bell housing. And then this piece up here is called a hogshead um, adapter. This is an adapter that Ford made to bolt the truck transmissions to. Uh, most of the car transmissions, this part was built into the actual transmission itself. Uh, but they made this separate piece so that they could bolt up the heavier, uh, stronger truck transmission too. But the good thing about this piece here is that it has the clutch linkage built into it. So that will work 
directly with the pressure plate and flywheel setup that I'm using uh, without any modification. So that's why I'm using this piece here. Now the bell housing, this is just a standard Ford V8 bell housing. The problem with this is the starter position. You can see this is the starter position where the um, clutch linkage is horizontal and the starter is like right on the Jaguar engine mount. That's obviously not going to work. But what I did is it's quite simple. All you have to do is rotate it just like that. And then I could pick up this piece, rotate it right there. I drilled two new holes in this for these alignment pins. Fits on just like that. And then super easy, just put this on, the, on my mill there and I drill and tap all new holes in the bell housing to match up with the holes on the hogshead right here. So now my clutch linkage is back at horizontal like it was and I have room for my starter up here. Pretty simple. So now what I need to do is make the adapter to actually connect the bell housing to the engine. You can see I have this sitting on some one inch spacers right there um, just, for, just for a set of purposes right now. But what I'm going to use as my reference point is the distance from the end of the bell housing here to the crankshaft where it meets the flywheel. I'm going to make sure I keep that distance the same as it was on the Ford Flathead V8 engine. That would mean, that will ensure that all the clutches and the bell housing and everything lines up perfectly as it did um, as Ford made it. So now I need to take a couple measurements. Okay, so back here I have the Flathead V8 engine that I took that flywheel off of initially. And this engine has the actual bell housing cast into the block. It's all one piece as you can see here. But you can still see that dimension I'm talking about from the end of the bell housing right here to the face of the crankshaft. So all I'm going to do is, I've got my calipers here, and I'm going to take a measurement using this ruler here. I'm going to put this ruler across the bell housing. And then just measure from here to the flywheel, the crankshaft. And that's right around 3.97 inches. Now I'm going to take the same measurement back up here. This is like right at 3.8, 3.855. So I'm going to do 3.97 minus 3.855. That's 115 thousandths. And since I already have this spaced up one inch, that means the actual aluminum adapter plate I need has to be 1.115 inches thick. All right, so now the work begins. This is an inch and a quarter thick aluminum plate here, 6061. This is what I'm going to be making the adapter plate out of. I wanted to try to find an inch and an eighth, 1.125. Um, but I wasn't able to find that for a reasonable price because I think that would have been close enough in thickness that I wouldn't have to face it down at all. Um, this is thicker than I need, so I will have to face this down once I get my profile cut out. But that'll be fine. This is plenty of material to work with, so let's get to work.
Alright, so hopefully now you can really see um, what this piece is here. All it is is just an extension of the engine block. That's all it is. So uh, now that I have it drilled, I have um, these holes here countersunk so that the heads of the bolts can slide down in there and clear the surface. I have to cut the outside profile here. So all I'm going to do for that is, again, it's super simple. I'm just going to rest this on here. I'm going to make sure I get it um, aligned horizontal with the actual engine block. And then to center it, it doesn't need to be super precise right now. So I'm just going to put a couple um, pieces like this in here. Align this with this. I'm aligning this piece here with the, the center of the crankshaft right there. Then I'll do the same thing with this piece here just to basically extend the center line of the crankshaft out so that I can measure it to this circle right here. So first I'll kind of eyeball it into place and then just take a few measurements around the outside until it's all equal. And then I'll trace the profile of the pattern down here and then take it back to the bandsaw and cut that all out and then drill the holes the same way as I did with the other side. Okay, so let's go over uh, what we have so far. First we start out here just the bare engine block with the crankshaft in it. First piece to put on is the custom aluminum adapter plate that we just made here. It's got these two alignment pin holes in there that made up to the two pins in the engine block right here. 
That ensures that it will always go on in the exact same position every time. There's no play in that at all. Next step is the flywheel. That sets right onto here in those new holes we drilled. Just imagine that I'm also bolting everything together too, of course. Um, all the holes do line up. And you can see right here, it looks like this flywheel is just sitting on, on that adapter right now. There is actually a little bit of clearance under there. It's super close though, so I'll probably go back at some point and just trim the inside of this adapter a little bit just to give the flywheel a little bit more room in there. And I'm also going to have to machine the plate up here to accept the starter that will mount from the back side. Um, but that's not too complicated and just taking some measurements and um, figuring out your spacing and things like that. But I do know that there is room for that. And the other thing I didn't show you either is I also put two alignment pins in this plate right here. And that aligns the bell housing. Um, this uses one of the original alignment pin holes right here. Since I had to rotate this though, the other pin hole is now like out in space down here. So I just drilled a little hole right there in the flange, put a little pin in there to locate that half of the bell housing. You can see that slips right on as well. No play in that either. Next up, the pressure plate brand new pressure plate will bolt right on here to the flywheel and at this point now it's not a Jaguar anymore it's a flathead Ford and what I could do now is just go online on the Speedway or something and buy an aftermarket adapter kit to go from the Ford V8 to the T5 transmission because lots of people do that there's lots of aftermarket support for that but <laughs> what fun is that right so the next step is to put on this hogshead adapter that mounts right on here like that you can see nothing's bolted together right now but it's super solid because I have pins in everything um, that's kind of important because you don't want any any sort of slot there at all so the next step is to make another adapter plate that goes from the hogshead to the transmission and I'm going to do that in another video so there'll be a part two to this where you see me mount the transmission how I sort out the the throw out bearing in here and the pilot bearing to make sure everything inside lines up because that's what counts and that'll be pretty much complete aside from a couple things like the starter and other little things like that uh, but it, there's really not a lot to this I hope you kind of see that I don't have the fanciest tools by any stretch of the imagination and this is my first time doing any sort of thing like this but it can absolutely be done and if it can be done then why can't I do it so Stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.